The first thing to note is that all menus are categorized by idle process by default, and the built-in documentation is also organized similarly. You can also see that on every ticket in the system, whether it's an incident, change, or knowledge article, the workflow is clearly visible and easy to understand. The workflow engine shows the current phase the record's in and any phases it has been in before. It also shows if any approvals are required. Fields that are required show up with a red asterisk and validation messages are clearly displayed. The activity section provides a complete history of every update. This includes those done manually and in the background, such as alerts and escalations. In addition, it also tracks field level changes, such as changes in assignment or status. The Process Designer and Service Manager provides a graphical interface to develop workflows that requires no programming knowledge and runs off a common security model. Let's take a look at the Workflow Designer. Here we see the process flow for incident management. Let's say we wanted to add a new phase to transition to if the CI on the ticket is business critical. Simply click the Add Phase button and name it. Then we can just connect it with our existing workflow. Here we'll create an automatic transition. This will make the ticket automatically transition to this phase if the conditions are met. We'll set the condition to check that on the current record, the affected CI's device severity is equal to a value of true. And then we'll just add a manual transition to the review phase. We can also add rules to our phase. Rules basically enforce business logic in workflows and forms. Here we'll add a basic rule set. We can then drill into that rule and add or edit almost any action imaginable, from sending an email, launching a URL, to making certain fields mandatory. You can also configure actions. These are functions initiated by the user either in the toolbar or on the form as buttons. These actions can be added globally or to an individual phase. Service Manager's Process Designer gives you pre-built ITIL aligned workflows to get started. Out of the box you get 68 predefined processes for all the ITSM disciplines including incident, change, problem, request, and knowledge management. Some discipline areas have one main flow, such as for incident and incident tasks and knowledge management, whereas others provide multiple flows. For example, change management has 12, including normal, standard, emergency, and release. The workflows marked with HP are maintained by HP. These workflows can be copied and cloned but not modified. This ensures that upgrades go smoothly. There continues to be strong alignment between COBIT, ITIL, ISO 20000, and KCS. Given HP support for ITIL processes such as incident, problem, and change management along with request fulfillment, HP correspondingly supports out-of-the-box processes for the aligned areas. For example, let's quickly look at COBIT guidelines for the IT Operations Service Desk. HP supports interacting with customers through a single point of contact. The service desk is the primary point of contact for internal and external customers. Recording and tracking incidents and problems or requests for change. Keeping customers informed on request status and progress. This includes proactively informing users about relevant IT events and user satisfaction through surveys. Let's take a look at using Task Planner. Here on a change record, we can use the Task Planner to create a group of tasks that run in any order we choose. This gives you the ability to link other processes and workflows on the fly. For example, here we can create a group of tasks to address development, testing, and code promotion. Linking one process to another also comes up in ticket relationships. On this incident ticket, for example, we can see how this incident is related to other idle processes, in this case problem management and change management. Relationships can be added or removed in this section as well. 
HP Service Manager Case Exchange is a solution to exchange data between Service Manager and another product. Case Exchange is enabled by connectors, which can open, update, and close records in the system of another provider. So let's take a look at Case Exchange in action. In this example, a line of business is using Service Anywhere, and Central IT is using Service Manager. Benjamin, the incident analyst in Service Anywhere, receives an incident. But after looking into it, it's clear to him that Central IT needs to address this ticket. Benjamin simply assigns the ticket to Central IT and saves the incident. Case Exchange then creates a corresponding ticket in the Service Manager system. Jessica, the incident analyst in Central IT, opens the incident to check the details. The details area of the Case Exchange section contains the originator information of this ticket. The system shows the external ID, the external status, and the system name. But to identify the cause of the issue, Jessica needs the application log from the line of business, so she updates the ticket requesting this information. This action transfers ownership back to Service Anywhere and locks the record in Service Manager. In Service Anywhere, Benjamin finds the status of the incident is changed to In Progress, and the Discussions tab shows the request for the log file from Central IT. Benjamin attaches the application log and then assigns the incident back to Central IT. Back in Service Manager, Jessica finds the incident status change to work in progress. The Activities tab shows the update from Service Anywhere and the Attachment section contains the log file. Once the incident is resolved, Jessica marks the record as resolved and the solution is synchronized back to Service Anywhere. In Service Anywhere, Benjamin notices the incident automatically enters the review phase and the status is complete.